The American Coaster Enthusiast is the most popular coaster club out there, and in 2000, they started a program to recognize coasters that are historically significant. Each coaster gets a plaque explaining its history, and over the last 23 years, they've given the honor to 47 coasters. Today, let's look at all of them and rank them up from worst to best. Number 47, Wildcat at Lake Compounds. This is a PTC wooden coaster that opened in 1927. It stands 75 feet and covers over 2,700 feet of track, and it was reconstructed in 1985 by Curtis Summers and Charles Dinn. It was retracked once again in 2016 by Martin and Flemix, and given Millennium Flyer style trains from GCI at the same time. This was closed when I came to the park, but the coaster does not have a good reputation. One of the roughest wooden coasters in the country. Number 46, Kitty Coaster at Playland Park. Designed by Frank Darling and built for a mere $2,537, this oval-shaped coaster was built to encircle the new playground back in 1928. It stands 16 feet and covers 485 feet. And if you were thinking about going to New York and getting this credit, you can forget it. Only kids are allowed to ride. This is by far the smallest coaster to receive the landmark status. Number 45, Corkscrew at Silverwood. This opened at Knott's in 1975 as the world's first modern inverting coaster. A very simple layout with a drop, a turn, and two corkscrews. This lasted at Knott's for 14 years before it was moved to Silverwood, and it's still in operation today. That's where I rode it, and it's still a smooth and enjoyable experience, and it blazed a trail for dozens of looping era coasters that came right after. Number 44, Thunderhawk at Dorney Park. This PTC wooden coaster opened all the way back in 1923 with the name Coaster. It was a simple out and back coaster, but seven years later, it was redesigned into a figure eight layout, now covering 2,767 feet of track. This 80-foot coaster has been around for 100 years now, using the name Thunderhawk ever since 1989. Number 43, Leap the Dips at Lake Mont Park. Opening in 1902, this is the oldest operating coaster in the world. It's a side friction coaster, so there's no upstop wheels, so the layout features small dips and straight track. Ace helped save the coaster back in the 90s, raising money to restore it, and after being closed down in 1985, it was reopened in 1999, still open to this day. Number 42, Thunderbolt at Six Flags New England. Back in 1939, there was a coaster at the New York World's Fair called Cyclone. Riverside Park, now known as Six Flags New England, was impressed by it and bought the plans, employing Joseph Drambor to build the replica, also using the name Cyclone, opening in 1941. This figure eight wooden coaster stands 70 feet tall, covers 2,600 feet of track, and you can still ride it as Thunderbolt, the only coaster in the park that was built before 1996. Number 41, Cyclone at Lakeside Amusement Park. Built back in 1940, this is the only remaining coaster built by Edward A. Bennell. It stands 80 feet tall, covers 2,800 feet of track, and the coaster definitely gets mixed reviews. With an 83-year-old coaster, that's not a big surprise. Number 40, Runaway Mine Train at Six Flags Over Texas. Opening in 1966, this coaster was a pioneer. After this made its debut, these mine trains became very popular for the rush of parks opening in the 1970s. It stands 35 feet tall and covers 2,400 feet of track, using three lift hills and ending with a ride's biggest drop. Number 39, Sea Dragon at Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. The junior wooden coaster became popular in the 1950s, the post-war baby boom getting credit for the trend, and John Allen of PTC unleashes on the country starting with this one in 1956. Opening is Jet Flyer. It stands 35 feet and covers 1,320 feet. A double out and back figure eight layout. Ace considers it a landmark for its hand-pulled manual brakes and no seat dividers. Number 38, Dragon Coaster at Playland Park. We go back to New York and Playland Park for yet another landmark. This 1929 Darling and Church wooden coaster. This one built so that the adults could enjoy it. Standing 75 feet tall, covering 3,400 feet of track. This was longer than most of the wooden coasters of the 20s. It also wasn't a basic out and back figure eight layout. It has an interesting custom layout that riders can still enjoy today. Number 37, Big Dipper at Camden Park. In 1957, the park retired its side friction coaster called Roller Coaster and looked to the National Amusement Device Company for a replacement. In 1958, they opened Big Dipper, featuring a 35 foot drop and 1800 feet of track, one of its trains being an original from when the ride first opened. Number 36, Racer at Kennywood. John A. Miller flooded Kennywood with coasters, this one being the last of the bunch in 1927. This 73-foot coaster is a Mobius loop, covering a total of 4,500 feet of track, leaving the station on one side and coming back on the other side. 
racing alongside another train the whole way. It's a mild ride with one nice pop of airtime at the end. Number 35, Jackrabbit at Seabreeze. Another John A. Miller coaster, this one from 1920, and one of the first to use upstop wheels, allowing for steeper drops and more speed. This is an out and back train coaster, standing 60 feet tall, covering 2,150 feet of track. And this coaster was almost lost due to fire in 1923. Luckily, the park was able to repair it and get it open for the 1924 season. Number 34, Montagna Russa at La Feria de Chapultepec. Back in 1964, this park opened with a record-breaking coaster as a centerpiece. The National Amusement Device Company got this project, a 110-foot tall, 4,000-foot Mobius Loop Racing Coaster. Like with Kennywood's Racer, the train would leave one station and come back to the other. Unfortunately, this park had a fatal accident in 2019 on the Schwarzkopf Looper, Chimera. This shut the whole park down, and last spring, Montagna Russa was demolished. Number 33, Matterhorn Bobsleds at Disneyland. Opening in 1959, this was Aerodynamics' first coaster, and it gets credit for being the first tubular steel track in the world. This track design changed the coaster industry, and to this day, most coasters use it. This is a dual track coaster being built into a fake mountain, each side having a little more than 2,000 feet of track, standing 80 feet tall, and it's still a classic family coaster to this day. Number 32, Legend at Arnold's Park. This opened in 1927, or 1930. There's some debate there. But it's another John A. Miller coaster built on the shore of Lake Okoboji, opening with the name Speedhound. 63 feet tall, 2,000 feet long, this is a very smooth coaster. Not too forceful, but a very enjoyable ride. This was in danger of closing down with the park in 1987 and 1999. Both times, it was able to get enough support to be saved. Number 31, Blue Streak at Conneaut Lake Park. Built in 1938, this Edward A. Bettel wooden coaster stood 77 feet tall and covered 2,900 feet of track a basic out-and-back layout. Conneaut Lake Park has had a lot of problems since the mid-90s, shutting down and reopening, but I was able to ride Blue Streak in 2018 and it was the roughest coaster I'd ever seen. However, I did appreciate its layout and its forces, so I don't consider it a bad ride. This closed in 2019 and while it was being demolished, it caught fire and burned down in 2022. Number 30, Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags Over Georgia. John C. Allen and PTC gave the brand new Six Flags Over Georgia a major wooden coaster for the 1973 season. Standing 105 feet tall and covering 3,400 feet of track, this has a long L-shaped layout alongside a lake. Here's another coaster that I think is terribly rough, but like Blue Streak, I like the forces, so it's not a bad ride at all. Number 29, Jackrabbit at Kennywood. Another John A. Miller design, this one right in the terrain, starting off with a big drop and having a mid-course lift hill. This leads right into the signature element, the 68-foot double down, something you must experience in the back row. Especially for a coaster built in 1920, this is some legit airtime with nothing more than a buzz bar. It still runs glossy smooth on its 2,100 feet of track, a credit to Kennywood for maintaining this 103-year-old coaster. Number 28, Whizzer at Six Flags Great America. Here's our first coaster from Werner Stengel. Built by Schwarzkopf, this Speed Racer model opened with the park in 1976, using the name Willard's Whizzer. It starts off with an electric spiral lift, rising up 70 feet in bobsled-style cars, and covers 3,100 feet of track with shallow drops and swooping turns. It's probably the most intense coaster out there with a 36-inch height limit. Number 27, Cannonball at Lake Winnie. John C. Allen and PTC opened this beautiful wooden coaster in 1967, standing 70 feet with an out-and-back layout covering 2,272 feet, a blue and gray train representing the two sides of the Civil War. Number 26, Swamp Fox at Family Kingdom. At 72 feet tall and 2,640 feet of track, John C. Allen and PTC built this out and back wooden coaster back in 1966. In 1989, Hurricane Hugo damaged the ride and it was closed for two years along with the park. In 1992, it got a new owner, the ride was restored, and Swamp Fox has been thrilling riders on Myrtle Beach ever since. Number 25, Revolution at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Built by Schwarzkopf in 1976, this coaster was themed to the American Revolution, opening on the country's bicentennial. When this opened, it was the first modern coaster with a vertical loop. It's a complete ride, 80 feet tall, almost 3,500 feet of track, and that loop is perfectly placed in the middle of the ride. It's a mild ride, perfect for kids wanting to experience their first inversion, and it's still going strong to this day. Number 24, Big Dipper at Geauga Lake. This legendary park found itself under new ownership in 1920, and they wanted to start adding new rides. In 1926, John A. Miller built Skyrocket, standing 65 feet and covering 2,680 feet of track. 
This out and back wooden coaster remained a stalwart in the park as it grew, being rebuilt in 1980 and again in the early 90s. The park was acquired by Premier Parks in the mid-90s, became a Six Flags park in 1998, then was sold to Cedar Fair in 2004 and the park was closed by 2007. All of the rides were removed or torn down, except for the coaster now known as Big Dipper. There was hope that the old classic could be saved, but in 2016, nine years after its last ride, it was finally demolished. Number 23, Racer 75 at King's Dominion. Taft Broadcasting built this park in 1975, trying to copy the success of King's Island and a big part of that was their John C. Allen PTC Racing Wooden Coaster. It opened as Rebel Yell, 85 feet tall and almost 3,400 feet long, two tracks mirroring each other in an out and back layout, renamed Racer 75 in 2018. This is still one of the best coasters at King's Dominion. Number 22, Giant Dipper at Belmont Park. This is a Pryor and Church wooden coaster, opening at the Mission Beach Amusement Center in 1925. 73 feet tall, 2,600 feet of track, this coaster cost $50,000 and was built in just four weeks. It survived a fire in 1955, stood idle for 14 years between 1976 and 1990, got the financial support it needed to reopen, and as part of the new Belmont Park, it's been going strong ever since. I rode this in 2019 and it was still running great. Number 21, Screaming Eagle at Six Flags St. Louis. Six Flags saw what Great American Scream Machine did for over Georgia, and they asked John C. Allen and PTC to build a bigger version at Six Flags over Mid-America now St. Louis. Standing 110 feet, almost 3,900 feet of track, hitting 62 miles per hour, this was the tallest, longest, and fastest single track coaster in the world. This has a long L-shaped layout surrounded by trees, one of the best rides in the park. Number 20, Riddler Mindbender at Six Flags Over Georgia. Opening as just Mindbender in 1978, this Schwarzkopf Looper is built on the side of a steep hill. This makes for some very interesting terrain. It's 80 feet tall, over 3,200 feet long, starts off with a loop and then dies off the side of the hill, featuring one more loop at the bottom. The change in elevation is 153 feet, which was very unusual at the time, using a four-sided tube truss track system with minimal supports. This coaster was ahead of its time. Number 19, Yankee Cannonball at Canopy Lake Park. This started its life in 1930 at Lakewood Park in Waterbury, Connecticut, then was purchased by Canopy Lake Park and transported to New Hampshire in 1936. At its new home, it was called Greyhound, 64 feet tall and 2,000 feet long, traversing an L-shaped layout. It even survived a hurricane in 1954, needing a new lift hill, but it was reopened for the 1955 season. It got its new name in 1983, and it remains New Hampshire's oldest operating coaster. Number 18, Comet at Great Escape. Another relocated coaster, this PTC opened in 1948 at Canada's Crystal Beach Park. That park closed down in 1989, but the owner of Great Escape bought the coaster at an auction, had the ride dismantled and stored, and it was rebuilt in 1993. Keeping the same name, the Comet, this 95 foot tall, 4200 foot long wooden coaster remains the best coaster in the park, and I made this classic my 500th coaster. Number 17, Blue Streak at Cedar Point. Even though Cedar Point had been open since 1870, it wasn't until 1959 that the park would start to transform itself into a major regional amusement park destination. In 1964, PTC built Blue Streak, an out and back wooden coaster, standing 78 feet tall and covering just over 2,500 feet of track. It's not a long ride, but those hills are full of airtime, making Cedar Point's oldest operating coaster a crowd favorite. Number 16, Montezuma's Revenge at Knott's Berry Farm. Schwarzkopf unleashed their first shuttle loop coasters in 1977, those mostly using a weight drop, but Montezuma's Revenge used a spinning flywheel. This allowed a faster launch. This one going from 0 to 55 in 5 seconds, going through a 76 foot loop and up a 148 foot tower, then doing it all backwards into a 112 foot spike. This was honored in 2019 as the only shuttle loop still operating in America, but as of 2022, it was shut down for a major renovation, replacing that flywheel launch with LSMs, as well as a randomized launch sequence, set to reopen in 2023. Number 15, Lock Desk Monster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. In 1978, Aerodynamics opened the first continuous track coaster with interlocking loops. Loch Ness Monster achieves this with two lift hills, standing 100 feet tall and covering over 3,200 feet of track. This ride is still running very smooth, and those interlocking loops look awesome. Number 14, Thunderbolt at Kennywood. Built in 1924 as Pippin, this John A. Miller wooden coaster was built right into a ravine. Its largest drop is actually its last, at 95 feet. In 1967, Pippin was expanded to include a section along the midway renamed a Thunderbolt when it reopened. Now, it covers 3,250 feet of track, its one lift hill being in the middle of the ride, 
and it's my favorite wooden coaster at Kennywood. Of all three ace landmarks at the park, this one is the most complete. Number 13, Racer at Kings Island. I mentioned it with Racer 75. This was the coaster that started a coaster boom in the 1970s. Opening with the park in 1972, this John C. Allen PTC racing wooden coaster stands 88 feet tall and covers 3,415 feet of track. The two tracks are mirror images, and 50 years later, it's being maintained to perfection. It's coming off a recent retrack and provides a smooth ride with good forces. Number 12, Wild One at Six Flags America. This John A. Miller PTC Woody goes all the way back to 1917, known as Giant Coaster at Paragon Park in Massachusetts. It opened as a side friction coaster. Over the years, it was converted to use under friction track. Paragon Park closed in 1984, and this coaster was sold to Wild World, now Six Flags America. And with the help of Curtis D. Summers and Charles Din, this reopened as Wild One with a modified layout in 1986. 98 feet tall, 4,000 feet long, this out and back wooden coaster is still running very smooth despite its age and being relocated. Number 11, Classic Coaster at the Washington State Fair. This was built in 1935 at the Puyallup Fair, commissioned by the owners of Oaks Park in Portland, getting John A. Miller to build his 55-foot wooden coaster. At first, it was a side friction coaster, but it was modified in 1950. It was known as Roller Coaster, Coaster Thrill Ride, Giant Coaster, and after a complete rebuild and restoration between 2009 and 2013, it reopened as Classic Coaster. This is a very smooth ride with some surprising forces, especially in the back row. Number 10, Giant Dipper at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. This seaside coaster opened in 1924, built by Pryor and Church, standing 70 feet tall and 2,640 feet long. The original ticket price for this was just 15 cents. After almost 100 years, this is a smooth ride with some great forces you wouldn't expect from a coaster this old. It's worth the current price of $7. Number nine, Batman the Ride at Six Flags Great America. One of the newest coasters on the list, this opened in 1992 as the first ever looping inverted coaster. Designed by B&M, standing 105 feet and covering almost 2,700 feet of track, this shows off three unique inversions, five total, and its impact cannot be overstated. Just about every major park has an inverted looping coaster, a concept introduced to the coaster world with Batman the Ride. Number eight, Roller Coaster at Lagoon. First opening in 1921, this John A. Miller coaster was known as Lagoon Dips, Poppin' Dips, Giant Coaster, and unofficially as the White Roller Coaster. Now, its official name is just Roller Coaster. It's 62 feet tall and 2,500 feet long. It survived a flood in 1921 and a fire in 1953, causing a major rebuild. With all the modern coasters that Lagoon has now, Roller Coaster remains one of their best. It got new Millennium Flyer trains in 2018, and it's still very smooth and has good airtime. Number seven, Comet at Hershey Park. The final coaster added to the park by founder Milton Hershey was the Comet, a PTC wooden coaster that made its debut in 1946. It has an unusual T-shaped layout, standing 84 feet tall and covering 3,360 feet of track, providing a very long ride full of airtime pops. Using PTC trains with just a buzz bar, this old ride is surrounded by modern steel monsters, but it remains one of the most popular rides in the park. Number six, Cyclone at Luna Park. Possibly the world's most famous coaster, this dates back to 1927 when Vernon Keenan was hired to add a new thrill ride to Coney Island. At 75 feet tall, over 2,800 feet of track, this became an icon for New York City. Still, in 1972, this was almost torn down, but Astroland Park leased the land and they were able to reopen the cyclone. This was replicated all over the world, its compact and thrilling layout being extremely popular, and as it approaches its 100th birthday, it's still an amazing ride. Number 5. The Beast at Kings Island just five years after Kings Island opened, their own in-house team took on the most insane coaster project anyone has ever seen. Built out in the woods, only the two lift hills being visible from the park, this would cover over 7,300 feet of track, almost four minutes of ride time. It stands 110 feet tall, but has a 141 foot drop into a tunnel. It's not the most thrilling ride, but the whole thing is an experience. And apparently the night ride is the greatest of all time. Number four, the Raven at Holiday World. When this opened in 1995, this CCI wooden coaster was kind of a throwback. It wasn't 200 feet tall. It didn't have seven inversions. It was a modest sized wooden coaster at 70 feet tall and 2,800 feet long. It used the terrain and is full of sharp hills and tight turns. This won multiple golden ticket awards for best wooden coaster, and it started the wooden coaster craze at Holiday World. Number three, Coaster at Playland. Back in 1958, Carl Fair designed this triple out and back coaster. 
Pretty modest stats at 68 feet tall and 2,840 feet of track, but its design makes it what it is. This has very open trains with a high lap bar where you can feel all those negative g-forces, and there are tons of them. It's almost scary in the back how much you're flying out of your seat. It also operates exactly as it did in 1958, having an open station and manual brakes. Canada's oldest coaster may be its best. Number 2. Phoenix at Knobles This PTC wooden coaster opened in 1948 is Rocket, located at Playland Park in San Antonio, Texas. Its park closed in 1980, and three years later, the Knoble family bought it, having to rebuild it without blueprints, employing Charles Dinn to help with the construction, and it was back in operation for the 1985 season. It adopted a new name, Phoenix, symbolic of how it rose from the ashes. At 78 feet tall, covering 3,200 feet of track, this double out and back wooden coaster runs glossy smooth, and it gives some of the best airtime of any coaster out there. 38 years after its relocation, it's still winning awards as the best wooden coaster in the world. Number 1. Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point Yeah, another list where Magnum is top dog. This aero creation was the first full circuit 200 foot coaster. This was the coaster that defined the word hypercoaster. 205 feet tall, 5100 feet of track, 72 miles per hour. No inversions, but tons of airtime. Those triangle shaped hills at the end give some of the best airtime of all time. Not only was this groundbreaking, it gives a ride experience that holds up to this day, and it's among the best coasters that I've ever ridden. So there you go, all 47 ace landmarks ranked. Let me know where you agree or disagree, what you would change around. I have not ridden all of these. In fact, I've ridden 35 of the 47, so for the other 12, I had to kind of guess and that can be hard. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like, and if you're new here and love coasters, please give me a sub. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright free off-ride footage, and my baseball channel if you're also a baseball fan. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.